What's up everybody, I'm Jesse Showalter and in this episode, I'm gonna be sharing with you my remote workflow and all the tools that I use to stay connected with my team as a remote designer. So I've been working full-time remote for about a year and a half and the workflow and the tool sets that we use have changed a little bit. They become more efficient, more productive. It's something that we talk about constantly. How can we stay more connected? How can we be a better team at this distance? We've added more remote workers onto the team, so I'm not the only one anymore. There's two others. So it's really important that working remote works. I said working remote works, whatever, you get what I'm saying. So with that being said, I'm gonna share with you the five tools that I absolutely couldn't live without as a remote worker and how the workflow kind of plays in between those tools. Let's do it. Okay, first up on the list is the mothership. It's the home base. It's what we all come back to every single day and that is Pivotal Tracker. It allows you to create large containers for lots of individual tasks to go inside of. Those large containers are called epics and they can be a major project or a major point release for the software software um, and then inside are all the individual tasks or tickets that need to be done to get that big project out the door. It's nice to be able to see everything at a 10,000 foot view but then also zoom in and see all the individual tasks and now we're all together on the same platform and it's phenomenal. All right, next up is our team communication tool and for that we use Slack. Slack is absolutely awesome for what it does which is getting you out of email and allowing you to have real time kind of like team chat. Um, we use Pivotal Tracker for more of the set in stone. Hey, here's what's happening with this project. I need this, give this to me, you're blocking me, accept this kind of stuff. And we use Slack for more of the iterative kind of like brainstorming and talking about things, communication. Hey, here's some screens, what do you think? Hey, I need to chat this idea out. Um, here's an article I think will help you. It's a lot of that iterative and brainstorm stuff. Okay, next up on the list is another form of communication tool and that's our video chat tool. And we use appear.in for all the video chatting that we do. Um, I do a daily stand-up with my design lead. I do a weekly stand-up with the design and engineering team together. And I do a weekly team meeting with every single person. It's just really helpful to be able to jump on a quick call. If you have any questions, you have a thought, you need to walk through something, hey, look at my screen. Screen, look at what I'm doing here. Um, and so that has been super, super helpful to be able to have that like in your tool belt. All right, next up on the list is planning things out, sharing documents, brainstorming in long format. And for that, we use uh, Dropbox Paper. We use Dropbox Paper mainly for content planning, content on the website, content in the application, uh, marketing content, um, as well as planning like kind of like loose roadmaps. So we'll do a lot of loose brainstorming and road mapping here. We'll have everybody kind of comment on it and then we'll kind of build those things out from the Dropbox paper doc into Pivotal Tracker. And so there's, there's a lot of kind of like, hey, I have a big thought, I'm gonna vomit all of this out on paper. Oh, okay, great, I'm also gonna vomit some stuff out on paper. I said vomit like quite a bit there. It's just a place where we just get ideas out and then we can start kind of working and tweaking and formatting things. So that's, that's what we use Dropbox paper for mainly. Okay, last on the list and it's the tool that I spend 99% of my time in. I'm looking at it constantly and I'm actually really excited because it's a recent switch we've changed and we are now using Figma 100% as our main design tool and I'm really pretty stoked about it, I'm gonna be honest. Figma as a tool itself feels just like Sketch. If you've used Sketch, you can pick up Figma immediately and it feels very, very comfortable. It feels like you're home. Um, but what my workflow looks like, creating projects, um, working on screens, working on projects, and then immediately right there in the project, opening up the comments and starting to comment on individual pieces, mentioning members of my team so they can look at those individual ones, individual comments, and we can resolve them right there inside of the design document. I can share the project I'm working on uh, in Slack or on Pivotal Tracker and people can look right there. I can embed it inside of a paper doc so people can see exactly what I'm talking about while I'm writing things. People can come in with read-only permissions and just look at the user flow. They can open up a, a prototype and start clicking through things. Um, all of it's happening right there and it feels really, really good. The workflow in Figma feels like a time saver. I don't have to create red lines using plugins anymore. I just create pixel perfect designs, I hand them off to my engineers, and they literally are able to go in and measure everything, download all assets that they need. That's what our workflow looks like in Figma. We design, we iterate, we comment, we talk, all right there 
and so much less of that creative file specific talk has to happen now in Slack or in Pivotal Tracker, it's happening on the file. We resolve all of those, we push up what we hope to be a final, and then conversation can happen in those other places, right? So it just, it can, it, it simplifies, it strips down that iterative and communication flow. Everything's kind of happening in Figma and I'm really stoked about it. Well, that's it. Those are the five main tools that we use as a dispersed team and the workflow that happens using those tools. How does my workflow and tool set differ from yours? I would love to hear that down in the comments. Let me know. If you have any questions, leave those down in the comments as well. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. I do lots of videos about design and code and workflow just like this one, so maybe stick around. I hope you guys are having an amazing week designing amazing things, making amazing things, and improving your workflow every step of the way. I'll see you in the next one.